Okay, we invite uh, Dr. Rajesh Sinha, who's going to talk about uh, managing cataract knives with uh, coronal opacity and haste. I think uh, this also requires a huge attention for our surgeons. Dr. Rajesh, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, when you have a cataract with a corneal opacity, the ideal treatment is to do a corneal triple procedure. However, uh, there are situations wherein you can have an opacity with vascularization, where there's a risk of graft rejection, the patient is one-eyed, cannot come for follow-up. In all these scenarios, if you can do a cataract surgery, and if the opacity is not completely covering the cornea, then in that case, if you can do a cataract surgery and provide a reasonably good visual outcome uh, for the life, uh, for the whole life of the patient, that may be preferable. So the idea of presenting this, uh, doing this presentation is to discuss methods to enhance visualization because whenever there's a corneal opacity or a haze, the visibility behind that to do a cataract surgery is difficult. So in order to improve visualization, the first and foremost thing is that we should have a well dilated pupil and if it's not there, then in that case you can inject some uh, uh, drugs like adrenaline, you can put hooks, etc. And uh, many times, you, if you have to do some uh, uh, manipulation in the iris, in that case, uh, it's preferable to do under peribulbar or subtenon block. Uh, Trap in blue, uh, since the time it came, has been very useful in white cataracts. And when there is an opacity, it's preferable to use trap in blue for a slightly longer period so as to stain the capsule dark so that you can do a capsular excess and later on, while doing chopping of the nucleus, at that time also you can see the capsular margin and you don't accidentally chop the margin of the capsular excess. So uh, that's the reason why one should use Trap and Blue for a longer period. Now, if you have an opacity like this and you are doing a, a capsular excess, then in that case, uh, once you start the capsular excess, you have held it, you don't stop behind the opacity, you stop where uh, opposite the cornea which is clear so that you can hold the capsular excess uh, margin once again and complete it. Now uh, another important thing is that you can use uh, all sorts of viscoelastic, uh, viscoelastic inside the anterior chamber which can coat the endothelium. You should also use viscodispersive viscoelastic on the surface of the cornea so that it increases the visualization at that particular time. And whenever you are doing some manipulation, you are doing a, say, chopping technique, put a blob of viscoelastic on the cornea and that clears up the vis visibility, uh, improves uh, significantly. Uh, as I said, uh, good quality vis viscoelastic is essential not only over the surface but inside the eye, that something that can uh, coat the endothelium. Uh, Sometimes you have a uh, opacity which is small and if the cataract is not very hard then you can manage without uh, putting any uh, enlarging the, uh, the pupil but here it's a black cataract wherein it is very difficult so in such a case it's better to put uh, iris hooks to improve visualization. Another technique was if you have a central opacity you can do slightly eccentric not exactly in the periphery but slightly eccentric crater and that helps you in chopping. Endo eliminator is again a good tool which can improve visualization while doing a procedure in a hazy cornea. The endo eliminator can be held by your assistant. Uh, it can be used from outside. You can, the assistant can show it from outside while you are chopping the nucleus. And once you have chopped it and you have to remove the epinucleus, epinuclear plate, then you can take the endoeliminator inside so that you can very easily delineate the capsule and the endonuclear margin and thereby you can uh, remove the endonucleus completely without causing any damage to the capsule. Uh, this is how uh, you can see how well the endoeliminator uh, is helping. Uh, you can use chandelier elimination from the parts planar and this, in a case of a hazy cornea, slightly hazy cornea, it improves the glow. And once you get a red glow, you can do a rexis and complete the procedure. Uh, as far as the IOL is concerned, if you have an opacity in the center, one should uh, never think of putting anything except uh, monofocal spherical IOL. But if you have an opacity in the periphery causing some uh, astigmatism, then in that case you can uh, put a toric implant. And uh, particularly in this particular case wherein 
there is some degree of zonal adhesions as well. You can put an endocapsular ring and then put a toric implant. Long back, we did a study uh, under Professor Tital sir. It was published in 2002, if I remember correctly. Uh, this was uh, a series of cases wherein we had corneal opacity uh, uh, and cataract. And what we did is uh, we did the cataract surgery and did small sphincterotomies at the margins so that we could create a pupil uh, adjacent to the opacity. So this part is being covered by the opacity, but once you have put the IOL, uh, a small pupil is created because of the sphincterotomy. If you do a large optical iridectomy, then in that case you can have an aphakic and a pseudophakic zone and that can have uh, confusion and diplopia. And, but with, if you do a small sphincterotomy, it is really helpful and that was published. If you have an opacity which is uh, covering uh, the cornea significantly, in such a case you can do an anterior lamellar keratoplasty. Uh, by, uh, you know, once you cut it, you can see how clear it is and once the cornea clears up, by removing the superficial hazy cornea, you can go ahead and complete the cataract procedure and once the cataract procedure is complete, uh, you can place the intraoctal lens and then after that, you can put a donor lenticule and then you can suture it. If the opacity is uh, up, extending only up to about 150 microns or 200 microns, you can do a sutureless anterior lamellar keratoplasty, but if the opacity is deeper, you have to put a suture. Another scenario wherein uh, it's a vascularized opacity which is extending uh, quite significantly, you can see intraoperative opacity is showing about 80% of the cornea is uh, having the opacity. So in such a case, you can do a, a lamellar graft and leave little bit of stroma and after dissection of the superficial hazy cornea, you can leave little bit of stroma and then go ahead and complete the cataract surgery. Once you have dissected it, uh, you can put a, a viscoelastic on the surface and that improves the visualization. Particularly in a one-eyed individual wherein the other eye is thysical as was in this case, uh, doing a, uh, an, a lamellar ex external extraocular procedure which is an anterior lamellar keratoplasty is better than, uh, than a full thickness graft. So in conclusion, uh, in a case of an opacity like this where there's a cataract as well, in such a case, uh, particularly if the cornea is vascularized, the risk of rejection is high, um, a patient cannot come for follow-up, he's one-eyed, you can do a cataract surgery. You enhance visualization by use of uh, trap and blue dye, by use of OVD on the surface, by use of endo-illuminator or chandelier illumination. And if you have a clear cornea in this area, you can do a small sphincterotomy in this area so as to provide a good, reasonably good visual outcome for the whole of uh, the patient's life. So thank you very much uh, for your patient listening.